Hi everybody. Thank you very much for attending this webinar. My webinar is to focus on the drugging effort on RAS oncoprotein, which arguably the most notorious cancer target. The term undruggable is somewhat of an exaggeration, and the more proper term should be yet to be drugged. Our experience teaches us that many so-called undruggable targets were eventually successfully targeted and drugged because of major advancement made in the understanding of biochemical and biological properties of these proteins and the availability of structure insights provided by X-ray, crystallography, and the nuclear magnetic resonance alike. Today, I would like to place my focus on the RAS story. After seeing so many scientists spending decades of time trying to find a drug that can inhibit RAS and the cancers caused by the RAS, I'm very happy to see the recent progress made in this area. Cancer drugs have evolved since 1939, when Charles Higgins used synthetic hormones to treat prostate cancer. The first chemotherapy drug, Mustin, was used in 1942, followed by Sidney Farber's use of antifolate to treat leukemia. In subsequent years, chemotherapeutic drugs targeting DNA by articulating agents DNA synthesis by nucleotide analogs and microtubules by vincristine, vinblastine, and taxol, as well as anthracyclines targeted at various cellular targets with the pillars of, for cancer treatment. The 1990s were marked by the targeted therapy revolution, imatinib, which inhibited the tyrosine kinase activity of BCR able, a fusion protein derived from the Philadelphia chromosome translocation, was invented and discovered to be effective against chronic model leukemia (CML) and gained FDA approval on 2001. The advent of monoclonal antibody therapies such as rituximab for treatment of hematological malignancies and approval of the aromatase inhibitor anestrozole for breast cancer further highlighted the progress of the 1990s. And the years 2000 witnessed further FDA approval of monoclonal antibodies, most famously those targeting immune checkpoint CTL4 and PT1 underscoring remarkable advances in immunotherapy that include the use of dendrit dendritic cell vaccines and CAR-T. Over the last two decades, the treatment of tumor patients has been revolutionized by the highly successful introduction of novel targeted therapies. However, despite great improvements of survival rates, limitation due to tumor heterogeneity, primary and acquired resistance, and immune evasion are still needed to be overcome. Accordingly, ongoing clinical trials actively explore the individualized use of small molecule and biologic drugs in new targeted therapy combinations based on patient parameters and tumor biopsies. The molecular principles and drug classes then may hold promise for improved tumor therapy combination regimens, including kinase inhibition, induction of apoptosis, DNA damage response inhibition, epigenetic reprogramming, telomerase inhibition, and others as listed on these slides.
RAS is the most frequently mutated gene family in cancers. Investigators have sought an effective RAS inhibitor for well over 30 years. The RAS protein includes three closely related 21 kilodalton isoforms. They are HRAS, NRAS, and KRAS. RAS was initially identified in the 1960s by Harvey and Kristen as a retroviral oncogene when sarcomas were induced in rodents from a murine leukemogenic virus preparation. There are two copies of KRAS, namely KRAS1 and KRAS2. KRAS1 is a pseudogene, and KRAS2 is simply referred to as KRAS. KRAS is alternatively spliced to form KRAS4A and KRAS4B. The term KRAS is generally used to indi indicate KRAS4B. Various mutant forms of KRAS are now identified and are divided into three broad categories based on the mutated codon. G12 at the codon 12, G13 at codon 13, and Q61 at codon 61. It was found that somatic KRAS mutations are present in about 30% of all human cancers. The prevalence of KRAS mutations is about 30% in lung adenocarcinoma and 5% in lung squamous cell carcinoma. G12C is the most common mutation subtype. G12C means glycine to cysteine mutation at codon 12. And this G12C is accounting for about 40% of all KRAS mutation and followed by G12V. In colorectal cancers, KRAS mutations occur in about 30 to 40% of case, all cases. G12D and G12V are the two most common mutation subtypes. The prevalence of KRAS mutations in pancreatic carcinoma is the highest, showing well about 80%, with G12D being the most common subtype. The RAS protein is a membrane-bound protein with GTPase activity and cycling between an inactive GDP-bound and an active GTP-bound form. A common mechanism of GTPase deregulation in cancer is the deregulated expression or activity of their regulatory proteins, one being guanine nucleotide exchange factors, short for GEF, that promote formation of the active GTP-bound state and another being GTPase activa activating proteins, short for GAP, that return the GTPase to its GTP-bound inactive state. When bound to GTP, RAS is switched on and activates intracellular signaling pathway, including the mitogen-activated protein kinase MAPK and phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase PI3K pathway, which are critical for cell proliferation and angiogenesis. Mutated RAS is constitutively activated and persistently turned on, thereby enhancing downstream signaling and leading to tumor genesis and tumor cell growth. The graph shows various approaches trying to inhibit RAS function, including membrane association, downstream effector signaling, metabolism, autophagy, synthetic lethality, and direct inhibition. 
The direct inhibition approach made some great progresses recently. For many years, since early 1990, great preclinical and clinical efforts were dedicated to inhibit the membrane association of RAS protein. RAS proteins require membrane association for their biological activities. Lipid modification of RAS proteins by a pharmaceutical isoprenoid is an obligate step in that association and is an enzymatic process. Accordingly, pharmaceutical transferase inhibitors, short for FTIs, were developed as potential anti ras drugs. The lack of efficacy of FTIs as anti-cancer drug in clinical trials was previously seen an indication that blocking RAS membrane association was a flawed approach to cancer treatment. However, a deeper understanding of RAS modification and trafficking has revealed that this was a wrong conclusion. In the presence of FTIs, PRAS and NRAS become substrate for alternative modification called geronyl gerinylation, so they can ex escape the inhibition and they can still associate with membrane and therefore still function. Thus, FTIs fail not because RAS membrane association is an ineffective approach, but because FTIs fail to accomplish that task. More recent efforts are being reinitiated to this approach. On this slide, proteins are shown by surface representation, with compounds and nucleotides shown as stick models. Each panel is colored to highlight important surfaces, with switch 1 in blue color, switch 2 in pink color, and relevant interfaces colored uniquely. In A, HRAS bind to GDPMP, which can be used as a reference for orientation. In B, switch to pocket in purple of uh, KRAS G12C bound to inhibitor AMG510. In C, switch to groove in purple bound to inhibitor compound 2C07. In D, DCA pocket, which is in teal color of RAS G12D bound to the inhibiting DCAI compound. In E, it shows uh, some of sevenness, uh, which is SOS that we would uh, uh, talk about later, binding into service in red of HRAS. In F, it, it is the proposed HRAS dimerization interface in green bound by NS1 monobody uh, which is shown in gold. In G, RAF-RAS binding domain binding interface in yellow of RAS, HRAS. Some of these important RAS interactive structures for drugging RAS will be mentioned later. As KRAS G12C mutations only account for a proportion of KRAS mutations, and are primarily found in lung adenocarcinoma. To effectively inhibit the other common KRAS mutations, K namely KRAS G12D and KRAS G12V, different approaches are needed as these mutants lack reactive cysteine in the active site. KRAS gene is essential for mouse embryonic development, whereas NRAS and HRAS are dispensable. If humans are similar to this regard, the requirement for KRAS creates 
toxicity concerns when targeting the wild type KRAS protein. The field of RAS inhibitors, pioneered by Kevin Shokat and colleagues, has focused on covalent inhibition of KRAS G12C only. The inherently reactive nature of cysteine, which is found at codon 12 of KRAS G12C, can be utilized to create covalent small molecule inhibitors. Importantly, wild type KRAS lacks cysteine in the active site, so KRAS G12C can be specifically inhibited with this approach. From another angle, initial efforts to block GEF activity to all RAS identify a small molecule that bound KRAS between switch 1 and switch 2, thereby inhibiting SOS binding and SOS and SOS mediated nucleotide exchange. Somehow, the field then shifted focus and tried to find small molecule inhibitor of SOS. One group identified a small molecule inhibitor BAY293 that inhibited the SOS-RAS interaction at nanomolar level. However, BAY293 weakly inhibited KRAS mutant cell proliferation, but more potently inhibited proliferation of wild-type KRAS cells. Currently, a later identified SOS1 inhibitor, BI1701963, is progressing in clinical trials. In 2013, Kevin Shoket and colleagues developed the first series of small molecules to bind KRAS G12C, the most potent of which is compound 12. Modification of the linker and hydrophobic binding pocket led to the development of a more potent and cellular active compound ARS A53. Further improvement, such as the introduction of a quinoxaline-based series and the fluorophenol hydrophobic binding moiety, enhanced the potency and pharmacological properties and led to the development of ARS1620. Using an alternative orientation of HIS95 in the switch to pocket, allow the addition of aromatic rings to enhance the protein-protein interaction with KRAS G12C, leading to the development of AMG510. Structure-based drug design approaches and optimization later led to the development of MRTXA49. Kevin Shock has led at the UCSF developed the first series of compounds to irreversibly target KRAS G12C. These compounds bound KRAS G12C in a GDP bound state, blocked SOS, catalyzed nucleotide exchange, and blocked KRAS G12C association with RAF. This compound only bound to KRAF G12C associated in the GDP bound state and therefore required KRAS G12C to first undergo GTP hydrolysis. About 75% of KRAS G12C is GTP bound in a steady state, but KRAS G12C has the highest level of intrinsic GTPase activity among the common oncogenic mutations and therefore is vulnerable to covalent attack. Since mutations in KRAS other than G12C 
have a lower rate of intrinsic GDP hydrolysis, it's unclear whether targeting the switch to pocket through a similar approach in this other mutant form will be successful. A company called Wellspring Biosciences later showed that when given to mice implanted with KRAS G12C carrying human tumors, an improved version of Shoket's molecule shrank the tumor growth. Engines AMG510 and Mirati's MRTX A49 act in a similar manner. Both bind in the switch to pocket and form specific covalent attachment to the mutant cysteine and locked the protein in the inactive conformation. Here comes a summary of the non-clinical efficacy results from AMG510 and MRTX A49. They both effectively inhibited cell growth against a wide range of cancer cell lines in both two-dimensional and three-dimensional cultures. The inhibition was observed in the majority of KRAS G12C mutant cells specifically. However, both inhibitors show a range of IC50, suggesting that factors other than KRAS G12C expression contribute to inhibitor sensitivity. Both inhibitors induced dose-dependent reduction of tumor growth in mice bearing KRAS G12C mutant patient-derived xenografts from several cancer types. In combination, EGFR and HER2 inhibitor, SHIP2 inhibitor, mTOR inhibitor, and the CDK4 and CDK6 inhibitors all improved the response of KRAS G12C mutant xenografts to MRTX A49. Durable cures were obtained in most of the test syngenic CT26 tumor bearing mice after AMG510 treatment, and the effect depends on the presence of T cells. The combination with PD1 immune checkpoint inhibition enhanced single agent treatment. The clinical progress of the KRAS G12C inhibitors is quite promising. By far, AMG510, MRTX A49, JNJ746991.57, which is ARS3248, and LY3499446 had entered clinical trials in 2019, and early results are as following. Half of 13 AMG510 treated lung cancer patients show regression, and half of 6 MRT A49 lung cancer patients show shrank tumors, as well as 1 of 4 colon cancer patients. Above are reported in 2019, and below are data reported uh, in uh, ASCO in May 2020. Three of 42 evaluable AMG510 treated colorectal cancer patients at 960 mg show partial responses and another 29 show stabilized diseases. Three of 22 evaluable AMG510 treated other solid tumor patients achieve partial responses, and another 13 has stable diseases, of whom 
three pancreatic cancer patients showed 30% tumor shrinkage. Overall, we are seeing good responses and the efficacy in lung cancer patient seems are better than uh, the other uh, cancer patients. As the field moves forward with the clinical trials of RAS-C12C inhibitors, there are several points to bear in mind as follows. Since the covalent inhibitors discussed above require KRAS G12C to be in a GTP bound state, resistant mutation could arise in G12C that disable the GTPase activity or to promote the guanine exchange of GDP for GTP. However, recently, molecules have been discovered that bind both the GTP bound and GTP bound states of KRAS. These molecules bind a new groove, which is switch 2 groove, which is adjacent to the switch 2 pocket, but away from the nucleotide binding site. This discovery highlights the dynamic nature of the switch 2 pocket and provides proof of concept evidence that both nucleotide binding states of RAS can be targeted with inhibitors, which is a good news. More durable disease control in the non-small cell lung carcinoma cohort may be partly related to higher EGFR expression in colorectal cancer patients versus non-small cell lung carcinoma patients and blocking KRAS G12C may lead to compensatory phosphorylation of EGFR, this in turn activating the MAC pathway. The KRAS G12C may not be dominant driver in colorectal cancer or other pathways such as WENT and EGFR mediate oncogenic signaling beyond KRAS. Vertical blockade of both EGFR and KRAS to achieve optimal clinical benefit may be necessary. Earlier, we have talked about the strategy of PAN-RAS inhibition by binding to SOS1. Beringer Ingelheim's BI170 1963 inhibits KRAS by binding to SOS1, which activates KRAS through the exchange of K, the RAS bound GDP for GTP. The selective inhibition of SOS1 allows KRAS blockade irrespective of KRAS mutation type. Preclinical data have shown that the PEN KRAS inhibitor blocks tumor growth for many tested G12 and G13 KRAS gene mutations, and the compound is selective for cancer cell line with mutations in the KRAS gene. The combination of the BI compound with the MAC inhibitor demonstrated a strong impact on KRAS signaling and resulted in increased anti-tumor activity based on dual pathway blockade and complementary mechanism of actions. Clinical trials of BI170-1963 as a single agent or in combination with trametinib has already been started. ProTech Proteolysis targeting Chimera is a novel approach to turn undruggable to druggable. Recently, Craig Cruz and team reported a first-in-class development of a KRAS G12C degrader, LC2. LC2 combines the use of MRTX A49 as warhead and VHL E3 ligase 
as effector in the panel of non-small cell lung carcinoma line. KRAS G12C proteins can be specifically and efficiently degraded. Many researchers are studying the PROTEC approaches using various warheads, different effectors, and different intermediate linkers. More of this approach will be discussed at a few slides later. Ken Potter is a contract research organization. We work as an extension of our client's R&D division to advance our client's drug discovery projects. We have over 2,000 scientists to form six major divisions, and they are biology and pharmacology, DNPK, chemistry discovery, chemistry CMC, biologics discovery, and biologics CMC. We have broad experience in contributing to our partners in developing therapeutic against wide variety of disease targets. In search for KRAS inhibitors, we have set up several platforms, including KRAS G12C, G12D, G12V, and SOS inhibition. And we have established multiple assays for KRAS inhibitor screening. We can use different assays for, mecha for mechanism studies, for example, different binding pockets. Using AMG510 as a positive control, here we show its inhibition to G12C only. In contrast, Bay293 show inhibition to KRAS wild type and mutant proteins by inhibiting SOS1. And we are currently establishing more RAS inhibition assays. We take pride to have more than 800 well annotated and validated cancer cell lines in our collection. And we have a panel of 2D and 3D cellular assays available. On this page, at the left side, it shows AMG510 was tested against three non-small cell lung carcinoma cell lines in a 2D cell tighter glow assays, in which AMG510 show good potencies against KRAS G12C mutated NCIH35A and NCIH2122 cells, while the RAS wild type NCIH1299 cells were clearly more resistant. At the right hand side, AMG510 was tested in 3D metrogel assays at both shorter and longer incubation terms against NCIH35A cells and again, strong potency was uh, observed. We utilize a variety of methodologies, for example, IHC, FACS, MassSpec, to characterize biomarker changes during tumor progression. This slide shows a comparison of downstream pathway marker changes in the Western blot assay when NCIH35A cells were treated with AMG510 and other compounds. The results show that AMG510 at the left uh, panel potently and dose dependently inhibited the phosphorylation of ERK, while the other two compounds were not able to do so. We use our 800 well-characterized cell lines to set up target validation, proliferation, and functional assays. We also 
utilize these cell lines to establish subcutaneous and orthotopic xenograft models. Established models containing various KRAS mutations, such as G12A, G12C, G12D, G12S, G12V, and others, are shown in the tables on this page. Some of them have been validated by testing against AMG510. This slide shows studies we did to test combination of compounds in development with AMG510 in two KRAS G12C xenograft models of NCI H2122 and NCI H35A, both non-small cell lung carcinomas. Six to eight weeks old female biopsy new mice were used at 10 mice per group. AMG510 at 100 mg per kit for single agent and 30 mg per kit for combo was dosed orally twice a day daily. Both single agent and dose dependent efficacy combination results were demonstrated. AMG510 showed potent single agent and combination efficacy. In Camp Partner, our biology and pharmacology department has strong in vitro biology, cell biology, and in vivo pharmacology efforts. Through the dedication of more than 260 scientists, we contribute extensively from target validation, hit finding, lead optimization, candidate characterization, to IND filing in the drug R&D processes. As mentioned earlier, PROTAC is one of the approaches we can use to drug oncogenic RAS. PROTACs and related molecules that induce targeted protein degradation by the ubiquitin proteasome system represents a new therapeutic modality and are the focus of great interest. Protex are bifunctional small molecules that simultaneously bind to a target protein and the E3 ubiquitin ligase, thereby causing ubiquitination and the degradation of the target protein. The ability of Protex to degrade proteins regardless of their functions make this approach highly attractive, particularly for those targets for which available compounds that bind to a given target without inhibiting its activity. Degradation of the target proteins by protax is also suitable for targets that overcome the effect of an inhibitors by overexpression. Ubiquitination of proteins is carried out by a cascade of three enzymes. This cycle can be repeated to generate a poly ubiquitin chain that directs a substrate for degradation at the proteasome. Within this cascade, E3 ligases are unique in their role of dictating target specificity. We have implemented assays along the cascade to validate all steps from E1 activity assays, E2 activity assays, E3 activity assays for protex, E3 activity assays for inhibitors, cell-based assay, and also D ubiquitin activity assays. We have established multiple assays for protag activity evaluation. The left two graphs depict biochemical assays 
and the graphs at the right are two cell-based assays. We have ternary complex formation assay, TCFA, for protect binding. We have enzyme activity assays for target protein ubiquitination measurement. We also have Western and ELISA for cell-based assays. In vivo, PK, PD, efficacy correlation is extremely important for decision-making before moving a drug candidate forward for safety evaluation. In addition to a complete platform of in vitro and cell-based target validation, MOA, and potency assays, Ken Partner has a complete in vivo pharmacology platform, which encompass oncology models ranging from more than 30 syngenate, more than 250 cell line derived xenograft, 500 patient derived xenograft to four human antigen knocking models to support both small molecule biologic and gene cell therapies. We have conducted thousands of in vivo studies in our ALAC accredited and OLO approved SPF animal facilities. As noted earlier, oncogenic RAS can activate downstream proliferation cascades and inhibit immune surveillance mechanisms to promote tumor progression. Both MAP kinase inhibitor, PN3 kinase inhibitors, and immune checkpoint regulators are being utilized to be combined with RAS inhibitors to maximize tumor therapeutic effects. Here, I would like to present to you an interesting case study. While we were evaluating a PI3 kinase delta inhibitor, we found out that this compound showed much better efficacy in the syngenaic model than xenograft models. Well, we tested this syngenaic tumor 41 in immunocompromised mice, the efficacy dramatically reduced. We then show a potent effects of the compound in another syngenaic model, CT26, with many mice demonstrated complete regression at high dose levels. The test inhibitor also was shown synergized when combined with anti pdl one antibody. Many months later, when we re-challenged the in-remission mice with CT26 mouse colon cancer cells, the challenging cells failed to grow. A non-related tumor cell line, A20, grew robustly. The results indicated that the efficacy of the inhibitor was immunocompetency-related and was immune memory-related. We then analyzed ex vivo with facts, the immune cells we isolated from tumors and splings of the mice in study. We found out the suppressive T-Rex cells infiltration was inhibited in tumors by the test inhibitor, while the TIL was not affected in the spleen. Therefore, we were able to show that the compound was not only inhibiting tumor growth as an inhibitor of PI3K delta, but also an immune regulator. Currently, this PI3K delta compound is progressing really well in clinical trials. With so many similar features, I sincerely hope the RAS inhibitor currently in clinical trials do really well for the patients. Many, many scientists have been working very hard for almost 40 years to develop 
effective therapeutics to inhibit oncogenic RAS. Lack of success over the long years made RAS a very notorious undruggable target. It is very exciting to witness several breakthroughs at different fronts in conquering this enemy. We must learn from prior success and failures to optimize drug design, develop new therapeutic approaches, and refine how patients are matched to treatments. At present, direct inhibition of mutant RAS provides the best therapeutic approach for RAS activating cancers. Therapies that target RAS activating pathways or RAS effector pathways could be combined with direct RAS inhibitors, immune checkpoint inhibitors, or T cell targeting approaches to treat RAS mutant tumors. Ken Palmer has rich experience and strong capabilities to contribute to oncology drug discovery and development. We sincerely look forward to collaborating with future partners. Thank you all very much for sharing your precious time to attend this webinar. It will be my pleasure to entertain any questions.